From the National Press Club in Washington, D.C., this is Rewind. This week, with recent sighting of a gunman on the Virginia Tech campus, the Students for Concealed Carry on campus hosted a debate on Second Amendment rights. I had the phone there and I dialed 911 and basically got out. I was in Norris Hall, think someone's shooting a gun, and then we had bullets coming through the door and everybody hit the floor. So I didn't have an understanding of what was really happening, however, until I was shot the first time. In my knee. A female victim of campus violence lobbied for the right of self-defense on campus. James Biela degraded my body by raping me and the Nevada legislature rendered me defenseless by denying me my right as a licensed concealed carry permit holder. But the survivor of four bullet wounds strenuously argued to slow down the push for weapons at colleges. We need to be maxing out all other avenues not only from from mental health from background check records but having a lock on the door. If we did all these things and we were still having problems, then we continue to look down the list. But don't go to the end of that list first. The annual Journalism Awards dinner celebrated all platforms of journalists, a pioneer of radio broadcasting, a new generation of TV war correspondents, foreign correspondents, political analysts, local TV reporters, columnists, web journalists, investigative reporters, and budding student journalists. As they accepted their recognition, the thank yous ranged from the short and sweet from the last of the Murrow boys. Thank you very much. I just want to tell you that I tried. <laughs> to a soft and respectful acknowledgement of her CBS predecessor. I feel like I'm, I'm outclassed and everything else by Dick. I can't really follow that. Um, Dick, I tried harder. The raw assessment of one's work. If anybody tries to tell you that the press doesn't have any power, there's nothing quite like being interrogated for a few weeks about your work to make you realize that you strike fear into the heart of tyrants and that um, that is power. And collegial sharing of this recognition. My colleagues at the Post uh, know that, that whenever anybody wins an award, it's because of the work that we all do together. Intense pursuit and dedication to the subjects of one story. I want to dedicate this award to those thousands of soldiers and to the journalists who are intent on telling their stories. The recipient for excellence in humor writing struggled. I can't be funny after all the stuff that's happened here. The people I write about are the ones who call me in the morning. Not great senses of humor. <laughs> There was recognition to the long-suffering spouses. In tribute to my wife, she has allowed me to meet the deadline, so thank you very much. And the support of children in attendance. I'm here with my 11-year-old son, Nicholas Swedeen. This poor child is hideously, what, what would you say, tortured in your suit. But you look like a stud. And with the advice to young journalists came the best acceptance speech of the night. If for some reason you miss D-Day, if you overlook the corruption in, uh, say, the Seattle ferry system, if you don't strike fear into the hearts of tyrants, you can't miss with a dog story. <laughs> Thank you. This has been Rewind.